Adam, Seth, Enosh. Kenan, Mahalalel, Jared. Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech. Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The sons of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tiras. The sons of Gomer were Ashkenaz, Diphath, and Tagarma. The sons of Javan were Elisha, Tarshish, Kittim, and Rodanim. The sons of Ham were Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. The sons of Cush were Seba, Havila, Sabta, Rama, and Saptika, and the sons of Rama were Sheba and Dedan. Cush fathered Nimrod, he began to be a mighty one on the earth. Mizraim fathered the people of Lud, Anam, Lehab, Naphtu, Hathras, and Kaslu, from whom the Philistines came, and the Kaphtarim. Canaan fathered Sidon his firstborn, and Hate. And the Jebusites, the Amorites, the Jurgashites, the Hivites, the Archites, the Sinites, the Arvidites, the Zemorites, and the Hamathites. The sons of Shem were Elam, Ashur, Arpatshad, Lud, Aram, Uzi, Hull, Gether, and Meshech. Eighteen Arpatshad fathered Shelah, and Shelah fathered Eber. Two sons were born to Eber, the name of the one was Pelet, for in his days the earth was divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. Joktan fathered Almadad, Shaleph, Hazarmaveth, Jera, Hadaram, Yuzel, Dikla, Ebel, Abimael, Sheba, Ophir, Havila, and Jobab, all these were the sons of Joktan. Shem, Arpatshad, Shelah, Eber, Pelag, Ru, Sarek, Nahar, Turah, and Abram, that is Abraham. The sons of Abraham were Isaac and Ishmael. These are their genealogies, the firstborn of Ishmael was Nebaioth, then Kedar, Adbeel, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Hadad, Tima, Jetur, Naphish, and Kadima, these were the sons of Ishmael. The sons of Keturah, Abraham's concubine, to whom she gave birth, were Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. And the sons of Jokshan were Sheba and Dedan. The sons of Midian were Ephah, Ephor, Hanak, Abida, and Elda. All these were the sons of Keturah. Abraham fathered Isaac. The sons of Isaac were Esau and Israel. The sons of Esau were Eliphaz, Ruel, Jush, Jalam, and Korah. The sons of Eliphaz were Taman, Omar, Zephi, Gadam, Kenas, Timnah, and Amalek. The sons of Ruel were Nahath, Zerah, Shammah, and Mizah. The sons of Seir were Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Anna, Dishan, Ezer, and Dishan. The sons of Lotan were Hori and Homam, and Lotan's sister was Timna. The sons of Shobal were Alien, Manahath, Ebel, Shephi, and Onam. And the sons of Zibion were Aya and Anna. The son of Anna was Dishan. And the sons of Dishan were Hamran, Eshban, Ithran, and Cheran. The sons of Ezer were Bilhan, Zavan, and Jokan. The sons of Dishan were Uzi and Aaron. Now these are the kings who reigned in the land of Edom before any king from the sons of Israel reigned. Bela was the son of Beer, and the name of his city was Dinhaba. When Bela died, Jobab the son of Zerah of Basra became king in his place. When Jobab died, Husham of the land of the Temanites became king in his place. When Husham died, Hadad the son of Bedad, who defeated Midian in the field of Moab, became king in his place, 
and the name of his city was Avith. When Hadad died, Samla of Masrika became king in his place. When Samla died, Shal of Rehoboth by the Euphrates River became king in his place. When Shal died, Balhanan the son of Achbor became king in his place. When Balhanan died, Hadad became king in his place, and the name of his city was Pi, and his wife's name was Mehedabal, the daughter of Matred, the daughter of Mezahab. Then Hadad died. Now the tribal chiefs of Edom were Chief Timna, Chief Oliah, Chief Jetheth, 52 Chief Ohalabama, Chief Elah, Chief Pinion, Chief Kenas, Chief Taman, Chief Mibzer, Chief Magdil, and Chief Iram. These were the chiefs of Edom. These were the sons of Israel, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun. Dan, Joseph, Benjamin, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. The sons of Judah were Er, Onan, and Shelah, these three were born to him by Bathshua the Canaanitess. But Er, Judah's firstborn, was evil in the sight of the Lord, so he put him to death. For his daughter-in-law Tamar bore him Perez and Zerah. Judah had five sons in all. The sons of Perez were Hezron and Hamel. The sons of Zerah were Zimri, Ethan, Heman, Calcal, and Dara, five of them in all. The son of Carmi was Achar, the one who brought disaster on Israel by violating the ban. The son of Ethan was Azariah. Now the sons of Hezron who were born to him were Jeremiel, Ram, and Kelabai. Ram fathered Ammonadab, and Ammonadab fathered Nashon, leader of the sons of Judah, eleven Nashon fathered Salma, Salma fathered Boaz. Boaz fathered Obed, and Obed fathered Jesse. And Jesse fathered Eliab his firstborn, then Abinadab, the second, Shermeah, the third, fourteen Nethanel, the fourth, Raddai, the fifth, Ozam, the sixth, and David, the seventh. Their sisters were Zeruiah and Abigail. And the three sons of Zeruiah were Abshai, Joab, and Asahel. Abigail gave birth to Amasa, and the father of Amasa was Jether the Ishmaelite. Now Caleb the son of Hezron had sons by Azubah his wife, and by Jerioth, and these were her sons, Jesher, Shobab, and Arden. When Azuba died, Caleb married Ephrath, who bore to him her. Her father Uri, and Uri fathered Bezalel. Later, Hezron had relations with the daughter of Machir the father of Gilead, whom he married when he was sixty years old, and she bore to him Segub. Segub fathered Jair, who had twenty-three cities in the land of Gilead. But Geshur and Aram took the villages of Jair from them, with Kanath and its villages, sixty settlements. All of these were the sons of Machir, the father of Gilead. After the death of Hezron in Caleb Ephrathah, Abijah, Hezron's wife, bore to him Asher the father of Tico. Now the sons of Jeremiel, the firstborn of Hezron, were Ram the firstborn, then Buna, Oren, Ozum, and Ahijah. Jeremiel had another wife, whose name was Adara, she was the mother of Onam. The sons of Ram, the firstborn of Jeremiel, were Maz, Jamin, and Eker. The sons of Onam were Shammai and Jada. And the sons of Shammai were Nadab and Abishur. The name of Abishur's wife was Abihail, and she bore to him Aban and Malid. The sons of Nadab were Sealed and Apaim, and Sealed died without sons. The son of Apaim was Ishi. And the son of Ishi was Shishan, and the son of Shishan, Alei. The sons of Jada the brother of Shammai were Jether and Jonathan, and Jether died without sons. 
The sons of Jonathan were Peleth and Zaza. These were the descendants of Jeremiel. Now Shishan had no sons, only daughters. Shishan also had an Egyptian servant, whose name was Jarha. Shishan gave his daughter to his servant Jarha in marriage, and she bore to him Atai. Atai fathered Nathan, Nathan fathered Zabad. Zabad fathered Ephlo, Ephlo fathered Obed. Obed fathered Jehu, Jehu fathered Azariah. Azariah fathered Helez, Helez fathered Elisa. Elisa fathered Sismai, Sismai fathered Shalom. Shalom fathered Jechemiah, and Jechemiah fathered Elishama. Now the sons of Caleb, the brother of Jeremiel, were Misha his firstborn, who was the father of Ziph, and his son was Mershah, the father of Hebron. The sons of Hebron were Korah, Tapua, Rechem, and Shema. Shema fathered Raim, the father of Jorkim, and Rechem fathered Shammai. The son of Shammai was Mayan, and Mayan was the father of Bethzer. Ephah, Caleb's concubine, gave birth to Haran, Moza, and Gazes, and Haran fathered Gazes. The sons of Jadai were Regem, Jotham, Gashan, Pelet, Ephah, and Shaph. Maka, Caleb's concubine, gave birth to Sheber and Tirana. She also gave birth to Shaph the father of Madmanna, Shiva the father of Machbina and the father of Jibia, and the daughter of Caleb was Aksa. These were the sons of Caleb. The sons of her, the firstborn of Ephrathah, were Shobal the father of kiriath Jerim, Salma the father of Bethlehem, and Hereph the father of beth -Gader. Shobal the father of kiriath Jerim had sons, Hero, half of the Manahathites. And the families of kiriath Jerim, the Ethrites, the Puthites, the Shumathites, and the Mishrates, from these came the Zorathites and the Eshtalites. The sons of Salma were Bethlehem and the Netophathites, Atroth Beth Joab, and half of the Manahathites, the Zorites. The families of scribes who lived at Jabez were the Tirathites, the Shimathites, and the Sukkathites. Those are the Kenite who came from Hamath, the father of the house of Rechab. Now these were the sons of David who were born to him in Hebron, the firstborn was Amnon, by Ahinom the Jezreelitis, the second was Daniel, by Abigail the Carmelitis. The third was Absalom the son of Makkah, the daughter of Talmai king of Geshur, the fourth was Adonijah the son of Haggith. The fifth was Shephatiah, by Abidal, the sixth was Ithrim, by his wife Eglah. Six were born to him in Hebron, and he reigned there for seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem he reigned for thirty-three years. These were the children born to him in Jerusalem, Shermeah, Shobab, Nathan, and Solomon, for by Bathshua the daughter of Amiel. And Ibhar, Elishama, Eliphalet. Noga, Nepheg, Japhia. Elishama, Eliada, and Eliphalet, nine. All of these were the sons of David, besides the sons of the concubines, and Tamar was their sister. Now Solomon's son was Rehoboam, then Abijah was his son, Asa, his son, Jehoshaphat, his son, Joram, his son, Ahaziah, his son, Josh, his son, Amaziah, his son, Azariah, his son, Jotham, his son, Ahaz, his son, Hezekiah, his son, Manasseh, his son, Ammon, his son, and Josiah, his son. The sons of Josiah were Johanan, the firstborn, the second was Jehoiakim, the third, Zedekiah, and the fourth, Shalom. The sons of Jehoiakim were his son Jeconiah and his son Zedekiah. The sons of Jeconiah, the prisoner, were his son Shealtiel. 
And Malkaram, Padiah, Shanazar, Jechamiah, Hashima, and Nedabiah. The sons of Padiah were Zerubbabel and Shimi. And the sons of Zerubbabel were Meshullam and Hananiah, and Shelamith was their sister. And Hashuba, Ohol, Berechiah, Hasadiah, and Jushabhezd, 5. The sons of Hananiah were Pelatiah and Jesheah, the sons of Rephaiah, the sons of Arnon, the sons of Obadiah, the sons of Shechaniah. The descendants of Shechaniah were Shemaiah, and the sons of Shemaiah, Hadash, Egal, Bariah, Neariah, and Shaphat, 6. The sons of Neariah were Elioenai, Hizkiah, and Azrakam, 3. The sons of Elioenai were Hodaviah, Eliashib, Peliah, Akub, Johanan, Deliah, and Anani, 7. The sons of Judah were Perez, Hezron, Carmi, Hur, and Shobal. Rhea the son of Shobal fathered Jehoth, and Jehoth fathered Ahumai and Lahad. These were the families of the Zorathites. These were the sons of Etam, Jezreel, Ishma, and Idbash, and the name of their sister was Hazloponi. Penel was the father of Geder, and Ezer the father of Husha. These were the sons of her, the firstborn of Ephrathah, the father of Bethlehem. Ashur, the father of Tico, had two wives, Hila and Nara. Nara bore to him Ahuzam, Hefer, Temani, and Hahashtari. These were the sons of Nara. The sons of Hila were Zerath, Izar, and Ethnan. Kaz fathered Anub and Zobiba, and the families of Aharhel, the son of Haram. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother named him Jabez, saying, Because I gave birth to him in pain. Now Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh that you would greatly bless me and extend my border, and that your hand might be with me, and that you would keep me from harm so that it would not hurt me. And God brought about what he requested. Caleb the brother of Shuha fathered Mehir, who was the father of Eshton. Eshton fathered Beth Rapha and Pasea, and Tehina the father of Iarnahash. These are the men of Rika. Now the sons of Kenas were Othniel and Sariah. And the sons of Othniel were Hathath and Meonothai. Meonothai fathered Ophrah, and Sariah fathered Joab the father of Guharashim, for they were craftsmen. The sons of Caleb the son of Jephunneh were Iru, Elah, and Nam, and the son of Elah was Kenaz. The sons of Jehalalel were Ziph and Zipha, Tyria and Aserel. The sons of Ezra were Jether, Mird, Ephor, and Jalen. And Mird's wife conceived and gave birth to Miriam, Shammai, and Ishba the father of Eshtemoah. His Jewish wife gave birth to Jared, the father of Geder, Heber the father of Soko, and Jekuthiel the father of Zenoah. These were the sons of Bithia the daughter of Pharaoh, whom Mird married. The sons of the wife of Hodiah, the sister of Naam, were the fathers of Kila the Garmite and Eshtemoah the Machathite. The sons of Shimon were Amnon and Rinna, and Benhanan and Tylan. And the sons of Ishi were Zoheth and Benzoheth. The sons of Shelah the son of Judah were Er the father of Lika and Lada the father of Mershah, and the families of the house of the linen workers at Beth Ashbi. And Jochim, the men of Koziba, Josh, Seraph, who ruled in Moab, and Jeshubileam. And the records are ancient. These were the potters and the inhabitants of Netaim and Gedera, they lived there with the king for his work. The sons of Simeon were Nemuel and Jamin, Jerib, Zerah, and Shal. Shalom was his son, Mipsam his son, and Mishma his son. The sons of Mishma were Hamuel his son, Zachar his son, and Shimi his son. 
Now Shimei had sixteen sons and six daughters, but his brothers did not have many sons, nor did all their family increase like the sons of Judah. They lived in Beersheba, Malada, and Hazar Shul. In Bilha, Ezem, Tolad. Bethuel, Horma, Ziklag. Beth Markaboth, Hazar Susim, Beth Bairi, and Sharaim. These were their cities until the reign of David. Their villages were Etam, Ein, Rimen, Token, and Ashen, five cities. And all their settlements that were around the same cities as far as Baal. These were their dwellings, and they have their genealogy. Meshabab, Jamlek, Joshua the son of Amaziah. Joel, Jehu the son of Joshabiah, the son of Sariah, the son of Aziel. And Elioenai, Jacoba, Jeshohea, Asiah, Adiel, Jezemiel, Benaiah. And Ziza the son of Shurfai, the son of Alon, the son of Jediah, the son of Shimri, the son of Shemaiah. These mentioned by name were leaders in their families, and their fathers' houses spread out greatly. They went to the entrance of Geder, as far as the east side of the valley, to seek pasture for their flocks. They found pasture that was rich and good, and the land was spread out on both sides, and peaceful and undisturbed, for those who lived there previously were Hamites. These people, recorded by name, came in the days of Hezekiah king of Judah, and they attacked their tents and the Munites who were found there, and utterly destroyed them to this day, and they lived in their place, because there was pasture there for their flocks. From them, from the sons of Simeon, five hundred men went to Mount Seir, with Pelatiah, Neariah, Rephaiah, and Uzziel, the sons of Ishi, as their leaders. They destroyed the remnant of the Amalekites who escaped, and they have lived there to this day. Now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn, but because he defiled his father's bed, his birthright was given to the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel, so he is not enrolled in the genealogy according to the birthright. Though Judah prevailed over his brothers, and from him came the leader, yet the birthright belonged to Joseph. The sons of Reuben the firstborn of Israel were Hanak and Palu, and Hezron and Carmi. The sons of Joel were Shemaiah his son, Gog his son, Shimi his son, Micah his son, Rhea his son, Baal his son, and Bera his son, whom Tilgath Pilneser king of Assyria took into exile, he was leader of the Reubenites. His relatives by their families, in the genealogy of their generations, were Jeel the chief, then Zechariah. And Bela, the son of Azaz, the son of Shema, the son of Joel, who lived in Aroer, as far as Nebo and Balmian. Toward the east he settled as far as the entrance of the wilderness from the river Euphrates, because their livestock had increased in the land of Gilead. In the days of Saul they made war with the Hagrites, who fell by their hand, so that they occupied their tents throughout the land east of Gilead. Now the sons of Gad lived opposite them in the land of Bashan, as far as Selika. Joel was the head and Shaphan the second, then Janae and Shaphat in Bashan. Their relatives of their fathers' households were Michael, Meshullam, Sheba, Jorai, Jachin, Zia, and Eber, seven. These were the sons of Abahel, the son of Huri, the son of Jeroah, the son of Gilead, the son of Michael, the son of Jeshishai, the son of Jado, the son of Buzz. Ahi the son of Abdeel, the son of Guni, was head of their father's households. They lived in Gilead, in Bashan and in its towns, and in all the pasture lands of Sharon, as far as their borders. All of these were enrolled in the genealogies in the days of Jotham king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam king of Israel. The sons of Reuben, 
the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, consisting of valiant men, men who carried shield and sword and shot with a bow and were skillful in battle, totaled 44,760 who went to war. They made war against the Hagrites, Jatur, Naphish, and Nodab. They were helped against them, and the Hagrites and all who were with them were handed over to them, for they cried out to God in the battle, and he answered their prayers because they trusted in him. They took away their livestock, their 50,000 camels, 250,000 sheep, and 2,000 donkeys, and a 100,000 people. For many fell mortally wounded, because the war was of God. And they settled in their place until the exile. Now the sons of the half-tribe of Manasseh lived in the land, from Bashan to Baal Hermon, Sinir, and Mount Hermon they were numerous. These were the heads of their fathers' households, Ephor, Ishi, Eliel, Osriel, Jeremiah, Hodaviah, and Jadiel, valiant mighty men, famous men, heads of their fathers' households. But they were untrue to the God of their fathers and prostituted themselves with the gods of the peoples of the land, whom God had destroyed before them. So the God of Israel stirred up the spirit of Pool, king of Assyria, that is, the spirit of Tilgath Pilneser king of Assyria, and he took them into exile, namely the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, and brought them to Hala, Haber, Hara, and to the river of Gozan, where they are to this day. The sons of Levi were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The sons of Kohath were Umram, Izar, Hebron, and Uzziel. The children of Umram were Aaron, Moses, and Miriam. And the sons of Aaron were Nadab, Abihu, Eliezer, and Ithamar. Eliezer fathered Phinehas, Phinehas fathered Abishua. Abishua fathered Bucky, Bucky fathered Uzzi. Uzzi fathered Zerahiah, Zerahiah fathered Moraith, seven Moraith fathered Amaria, Amaria fathered Ahitub. Ahitub fathered Zadok, Zadok fathered Ahamaz. Ahamaz fathered Azariah, Azariah fathered Johanan. Johanan fathered Azariah, it was he who served as the priest in the house which Solomon built in Jerusalem. Azariah fathered Amaria, Amaria fathered Ahitub. Ahitub fathered Zadok, Zadok fathered Shalom. Shalom fathered Hilkiah, Hilkiah fathered Azariah. Azariah fathered Sariah, and Sariah fathered Jehozadak. Jehozadak went along when the Lord led Judah and Jerusalem into exile by Nebuchadnezzar. The sons of Levi were Gershom, Kohath, and Merari. These are the names of the sons of Gershom, Libni and Shimi. The sons of Kohath were Umram, Izar, Hebron, and Uzziel. The sons of Merari were Mali and Mushi. And these are the families of the Levites according to their fathers' households. Of Gershom, Libni his son, Jehoth his son, Zima his son, Joah his son, Ido his son, Zerah his son, and Jetherai his son. The sons of Kohath were Ammonadab his son, Korah his son, Asur his son, Elkanah his son, Ebiasaph his son, Asur his son, Tahath his son, Uriel his son, Aziah his son, and Shal his son. The sons of Elkanah were Amasai and Ahimoth. As for Elkanah, the sons of Elkanah were Zophai his son, Nahath his son, Eliab his son, Jeraham his son, and Elkanah his son. The sons of Samuel were Joel, the firstborn, and Abijah, the second. The sons of Merari were Mali, Libni his son, Shimi his son, Uzzah his son, Shermeah his son, Haggaiah his son, and Isaiah his son. Now these are the ones whom David appointed over the service of song in the house of the Lord, 
after the ark rested there. They were ministering in song in front of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting until Solomon's building of the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, and they served in their office according to their order. These are the ones who served with their sons, from the sons of the Kohathites were Heman the singer, the son of Joel, the son of Samuel, the son of Elkanah, the son of Jeraham, the son of Eliel, the son of Toa, the son of Zuf, the son of Elkanah, the son of Mahath, the son of Amasai, the son of Elkanah, the son of Joel, the son of Azariah, the son of Zephaniah, the son of Tahath, the son of Assur, the son of Ebiasaph, the son of Korah, the son of Azar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, the son of Israel. Heman's brother Azaph stood at his right hand, Azaph the son of Berechiah, the son of Shermeah, the son of Michael, the son of Basiah, the son of Melchijah, the son of Ethni, the son of Zerah, the son of Adaiah, the son of Ethan, the son of Zima, the son of Shimi, the son of Jehoph, the son of Gershom, the son of Levi. On the left hand were their kinsmen the sons of Merari, Ethan the son of Kishi, the son of Abdi, the son of Malak, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Amaziah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Amzi, the son of Bani, the son of Shemer, the son of Mali, the son of Mushi, the son of Merari, the son of Levi. Their kinsmen the Levites were appointed for all the service of the tabernacle of the house of God. But Aaron and his sons offered on the altar of burnt offering and on the altar of incense, for all the work of the most holy place, and to make atonement for Israel, in accordance with everything that Moses the servant of God had commanded. These are the sons of Aaron, Eleazar his son, Phinehas his son, Abishua his son. Bucky his son, Uzi his son, Zerahiah his son, Mareath his son, Amariah his son, Ahitub his son, Zadok his son, and Ahamaz his son. Now these are their settlements according to their camps within their borders. To the sons of Aaron of the families of the Kohathites, for theirs was the first lot. To them they gave Hebron in the land of Judah and its pasture lands around it. But they gave the fields of the city and its settlements to Caleb the son of Jephunneh. To the sons of Aaron they gave the following cities of refuge, Hebron, Libna together with its pasture lands, Jadar, Eshtemoa with its pasture lands, Hylan with its pasture lands, Debir with its pasture lands. Ashen with its pasture lands, and Beth Shemesh with its pasture lands. And from the tribe of Benjamin, Geba with its pasture lands, Alameth with its pasture lands, and Anathoth with its pasture lands. Their cities throughout their families were thirteen cities in all. Then to the rest of the sons of Kohath were given by Lot, from the family of the tribe, from the half-tribe, the half of Manasseh, ten cities. To the sons of Gershom, according to their families, were given from the tribe of Issachar, the tribe of Asher, the tribe of Naphtali, and the tribe of Manasseh, thirteen cities in Bashan. To the sons of Merari were given by Lot, according to their families, from the tribe of Reuben, the tribe of Gad, and the tribe of Zebulun, twelve cities. So the sons of Israel gave the Levites the cities with their pasture lands. They gave by lot from the tribe of the sons of Judah, the tribe of the sons of Simeon, and the tribe of the sons of Benjamin, these cities which are mentioned by name. Now some of the families of the sons of Kohath had cities of their territory from the tribe of Ephraim. They gave to them the following cities of refuge, Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim with its pasture lands, Gezer with its pasture lands, Jachmim with its pasture lands, Beth Horon with its pasture lands, 
Ijalan with its pasture lands, and Gathrimon with its pasture lands. And from the half tribe of Manasseh, Aner with its pasture lands and Bilim with its pasture lands, for the rest of the family of the sons of Kohath. To the sons of Gershom were given, from the family of the half tribe of Manasseh, Golan and Bashan with its pasture lands and Ashtaroth with its pasture lands. And from the tribe of Issachar, Kadesh with its pasture lands, Dabarath with its pasture lands, Ramath with its pasture lands, and Anam with its pasture lands. And from the tribe of Asher, Mashal with its pasture lands, Abdon with its pasture lands, Hukok with its pasture lands, and Rehob with its pasture lands. And from the tribe of Naphtali, Kadesh in Galilee with its pasture lands, Haman with its pasture lands, and Kiriathame with its pasture lands. To the rest of the Levites, the sons of Merari, were given, from the tribe of Zebulun, Rimmano with its pasture lands, Tabor with its pasture lands. And beyond the Jordan at Jericho, on the east side of the Jordan, were given them, from the tribe of Reuben, Bezer in the wilderness with its pasture lands, Jaza with its pasture lands. Kedemoth with its pasture lands, and Mepheth with its pasture lands. And from the tribe of Gad, Ramoth in Gilead with its pasture lands, Mahanaim with its pasture lands. Heshbon with its pasture lands, and Jazer with its pasture lands. Now the sons of Issachar were four, Tola, Pua, Jashub, and Shimron. The sons of Tola were Uzi, Rephaia, Jeriel, Jamai, Ibsam, and Samuel, heads of their father's households. The sons of Tola were valiant warriors in their generations. Their number in the days of David was 22,600. The son of Uzi was Israhiah. And the sons of Israhiah were Michael, Obadiah, Joel, and Ishiah, all five of them were chief men. And with them by their generations according to their father's households were thirty-six thousand troops of the army for war, for they had many wives and sons. Their relatives among all the families of Issachar were valiant warriors, registered by genealogy, eighty-seven thousand in all. Benjamin had three sons, Bela, Becher, and Gedeel. The sons of Bela were five, Esben, Uzi, Uziel, Jerimoth, and Iri. They were heads of Fathers households, valiant warriors, 22,034 registered by genealogy. The sons of Becher were Zamira, Josh, Eliezer, Elioenai, Omri, Jerimoth, Abijah, Anathoth, and Ailmeth. All these were the sons of Becher. They were registered by genealogy according to their generations, heads of their father's households, 20,200 valiant warriors. The son of Gedeel was Bilhan. And the sons of Bilhan were Jush, Benjamin, Ehud, Shanana, Zethan, Tarshish, and Ahishahar. All these were sons of Gedeel, according to the heads of their father's households, 17,200 valiant warriors who were ready to go out with the army to war. Shuppim and Huppim were the sons of Iyar, Hushim was the son of Ahir. The sons of Naphtali were Jaziel, Guni, Jezer, and Shalom, the sons of Bilha. The sons of Manasseh were Israel, to whom his Aramean concubine gave birth, she also gave birth to Makir, the father of Gilead. Makir took a wife from Huppim and Shuppim, whose name was Maka. And the name of the second was Zelophehad, and Zelophehad had daughters. Maka the wife of Makir gave birth to a son, and she named him Paresh, the name of his brother was Sheresh, and his sons were Ulam and Rakim. The son of Ulam was Bedan. These were the sons of Gilead the son of Makir, the son of Manasseh. 
His sister Hamalekith gave birth to Ishhad, Abizer, and Mala. The sons of Shemida were Ahian, Shechem, Leki, and Anian. The sons of Ephraim were Shuthala and Baird his son, Tahoth his son, Elida his son, Tahoth his son. Zabad his son, Shuthala his son, and Ezer and Elid, whom the men of Gath who were born in the land killed, because they came down to take their livestock. Their father Ephraim mourned for many days, and his relatives came to comfort him. Then he went in to his wife, and she conceived and gave birth to a son, and he named him Bariah, because misfortune had come upon his house. His daughter was Shira, who built lower and upper Beth Horon, as well as Uz and Shira. Repha was his son along with Reshef, Tela his son, Tayan his son, Laden his son, Amahad his son, Elishama his son, Nan his son, and Joshua his son. Their possessions and dwelling places were Bethel with its towns, and to the east, Naran, and to the west, Gezer with its towns, and Shechem with its towns, as far as Aya with its towns, twenty-nine and along the borders of the sons of Manasseh, Beth Sheen with its towns, Tanak with its towns, Megiddo with its towns, and Dor with its towns. In these regions lived the sons of Joseph the son of Israel. The sons of Asher were Imna, Ishva, Ishvi, and Bariah, and Sarah was their sister. The sons of Bariah were Heber and Malkiel, who was the father of Berzath. Heber fathered Japhlet, Shomer, and Hotham, and their sister Shua. The sons of Japhlet were Pasach, Bimhol, and Ashvath. These were the sons of Japhlet. The sons of Shemer were Ahi and Roga, and Jehubba and Aram. The sons of his brother Helem were Zopha, Imna, Shalesh, and Amal. The sons of Zopha were Suah, Harnifer, Shul, Beri, Imra. Bezer, Had, Shama, Shilsha, Ithran, and Bira. The sons of Jethur were Jephunneh, Pispa, and Ara. The sons of Ola were Ara, Haniel, and Rizia. All these were the sons of Asher, heads of the Fathers houses, choice, valiant mighty men, and heads of the leaders. And the number of them registered by genealogy for service in war was twenty-six thousand men. And Benjamin fathered Bela his firstborn, Ashbel the second, Ahara the third. Noah the fourth, and Rapha the fifth. Bela had sons, Adder, Gera, Abihud, Abishua, Naaman, Ahoa, Gera, Shephaphan, and Huram. These are the sons of Ehud, these are the heads of Fathers' households of the inhabitants of Geba, and they took them into exile to Manahath. Namely, Naaman, Ahijah, and Gera, he exiled them, and he fathered Uzzah and Ahahud. Shaharim fathered children in the country of Moab after he had sent his wives Hushim and Bara away. By Hodesh his wife he fathered Jobab, Zibiah, Misha, Malcam, Juz, Sakia, and Murma. These were his sons, heads of Fathers' households. By Hushim he fathered Abitub and Elpal. The sons of Elpal were Eber, Mizham, and Shemd, who built Ono and Lod, with its towns. And Bariah and Shema, who were heads of Fathers households of the inhabitants of Ijalan, who put the inhabitants of Gath to flight. And Ahio, Shashak, and Jerimoth. Zebadiah, Arad, Eder. Michael, Ishba, and Joha were the sons of Bariah. Zebadiah, Meshullam, Hizki, Heber. Ishmarai, Islia, and Jobab were the sons of Elpal. Jakim, Zikri, Zabdi. Elianai, Zilathai, Eliel. Adeya, Bariah, 
and Shimrath were the sons of Shimi. Ishpan, Eber, Eliel. Abdon, Zikri, Hanan. Hananiah, Elam, and Thithijah. Iphdia, and Penel were the sons of Shashak. Shamshari, Shehariah, Athaliah. Jerashia, Elijah, and Zikri were the sons of Jeraham. These were heads of the Fathers' households according to their generations, chief men who lived in Jerusalem. Now, Jeel, the father of Gibeon lived in Gibeon, and his wife's name was Makkah. And his firstborn son was Abdon, then Zur, Kish, Baal, Nadab, Geder, Ahio, and Zechar. Mikloth fathered Shemia. They also lived with their relatives in Jerusalem opposite their other relatives. Na fathered Kish, Kish fathered Saul, and Saul fathered Jonathan, Malchishua, Abinadab, and Eshbal. The son of Jonathan was Meribal, and Meribal fathered Micah. The sons of Micah were Pithon, Melech, Teria, and Ahaz. Ahaz fathered Jehoda, Jehoda fathered Elmeth, Asmaveth, and Zimri, and Zimri fathered Moza. Moza fathered Binia, Rapha was his son, Elisa, his son, and Azel, his son. Azel had six sons, and these were their names, Azrakam, Bachru, Ishmael, Shiariah, Obadiah, and Hanan. All these were the sons of Azel. The sons of his brother Eshek were Ulam his firstborn, Jush the second, and Eliphalet the third. The sons of Ulam were valiant mighty men, archers, and they had many sons and grandsons, 150 of them. All these were among the sons of Benjamin. So all Israel was enrolled in genealogies, and behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel. And Judah was taken into exile to Babylon for their infidelity. Now the first inhabitants who lived on their own property in their cities were people of Israel, including the priests, the Levites, and the temple servants. Some of the sons of Judah, some of the sons of Benjamin, and some of the sons of Ephraim and Manasseh lived in Jerusalem. Uthai the son of Amahad, the son of Omri, the son of Imri, the son of Bani, from the sons of Perez the son of Judah. From the Shilonites were Asiah the firstborn and his sons. From the sons of Zerah were Jul and their relatives, six hundred and ninety of them. From the sons of Benjamin were Salah the son of Meshullam, the son of Hodaviah, the son of Hasanua. And Ibniah the son of Jeraham, and Elah the son of Uzi, the son of Mikri, and Meshullam the son of Shephatiah, the son of Ruel, the son of Abnijah. And their relatives according to their generations, 956. All these men were heads of Fathers' households according to their Fathers' houses. From the priests were Judiah, Jehoiarib, Jachin. And Azariah the son of Hilkiah, the son of Meshullam, the son of Zadok, the son of Meraeth, the son of Ahitub, the chief officer of the house of God. And Adaiah the son of Jeraham, the son of Pashur, the son of Malchijah, and Masai the son of Adiel, the son of Jazra, the son of Meshullam, the son of Meshillamith, the son of Immer. And their relatives, heads of their fathers' households, 1,760 competent men for the work of the service of the house of God. Of the Levites, there were Shemaiah the son of Hashab, the son of Azrakam, the son of Hashabiah, of the sons of Merari. And Bakbakar, Haresh, and Galo, and Metania the son of Micah, the son of Zikri, the son of Azaph. And Obadiah the son of Shemaiah, the son of Galo, the son of Jeduthun, and Barikiah the son of Asa, the son of Elkanah, who lived in the settlements of the Netophathites. 
Now the gatekeepers were Shalom, a cub, Talman, a hymen, and their relatives, Shalom the chief. Being stationed until now at the king's gate to the east. These were the gatekeepers for the camp of the sons of Levi. Shalom the son of Korah, the son of Ebiasaph, the son of Korah, and his relatives of his father's house, the Korahites, were in charge of the work of the service, doorkeepers of the tent, and their fathers had been in charge of the camp of the Lord, keepers of the entrance. Phinehas the son of Eleazar was supervisor over them previously, and the Lord was with him. Zechariah the son of Meshalemia was gatekeeper of the entrance of the tent of meeting. Those who were chosen to be gatekeepers at the thresholds were 212 in all. They were registered by genealogy in their settlements, those whom David and Samuel the seer appointed in their official capacity. So they and their sons were in charge of the gates of the house of the Lord, the house of the tent, in their divisions of service. The gatekeepers were on the four sides, to the east, west, north, and south. Their relatives in their settlements were to come in every seven days from time to time to be with them. For the four chief gatekeepers, who were Levites, served in an official capacity, and were in charge of the chambers and in charge of the treasuries in the house of God. They spent the night around the house of God, because the watch was committed to them, and they were in charge of opening it morning by morning. Now some of them were in charge of the utensils of the service, for they counted them when they brought them in and when they took them out. Some of them also were appointed over the furniture and over all the utensils of the sanctuary, and over the finely milled flour, the wine, the olive oil, the frankincense, and the balsam oil. Some of the sons of the priests prepared the mixing of the balsam oil. Mattathiah, one of the Levites, who was the firstborn of Shalom the Korahite, had the responsibility for the baking of cakes in pans. Some of their relatives of the sons of the Kohathites were in charge of the showbread to prepare it every Sabbath. Now these are the singers, heads of Fathers' households of the Levites, who lived in the chambers of the temple free of other duties, for they were engaged in their work day and night. Thirty-four these were heads of Fathers' households of the Levites according to their generations, chief men who lived in Jerusalem. Jeel the father of Gibeon lived in Gibeon, and his wife's name was Maka. And his firstborn son was Abdin, then Zur, Kish, Baal, Na, Nadab. Geder, Ahio, Zechariah, and Mikloth. Mikloth fathered Shimeim. And they also lived with their relatives in Jerusalem opposite their other relatives. Na fathered Kish, Kish fathered Saul, and Saul fathered Jonathan, Malchishua, Abinadab, and Eshbal. The son of Jonathan was Meribbal, and Meribbal fathered Micah. The sons of Micah were Pithon, Melech, Taria, and Ahaz. Ahaz fathered Jera, Jera fathered Elmeth, Asmaveth, and Zimri, and Zimri fathered Moza. Moza fathered Binia, and Rephaia was his son, Elisa his son, Azel his son. Azel had six sons whose names were these, Azrakam, Bacharu, Ishmael, Shiariah, Obadiah, and Hanan. These were the sons of Azel. Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from the Philistines but fell fatally wounded on Mount Gilboa. And the Philistines also overtook Saul and his sons, and the Philistines killed Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malchishua, the sons of Saul. The battle became severe against Saul, and the archers found him and he was wounded by the archers. Then Saul said to his armor-bearer, Draw your sword and thrust me through with it, otherwise these uncircumcised Philistines will come and abuse me. But his armor-bearer would not, for he was very afraid. So Saul took his own sword and fell on it. 
When his armor-bearer saw that Saul was dead, he likewise fell on his sword and died. So Saul died with his three sons, and all those of his house died together. When all the people of Israel who were in the valley saw that they had fled, and that Saul and his sons were dead, they abandoned their cities and fled, and the Philistines came and lived in them. It came about the next day, when the Philistines came to strip those killed, that they found Saul and his sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. So they stripped him and took his head and his armor and sent messengers around the land of the Philistines to carry the good news to their idols and to the people. They put his armor in the house of their gods and impaled his head in the house of Dagon. When all Jabesh Gilead heard everything that the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men got up and took away the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons, and brought them to Jabesh, and they buried their bones under the oak in Jabesh, and fasted for seven days. So Saul died for his unfaithfulness which he committed against the Lord, because of the word of the Lord which he did not keep, and also because he asked counsel of a medium, making inquiry of her, and did not inquire of the Lord. Therefore he killed him and turned the kingdom over to David, the son of Jesse. Then all Israel gathered to David at Hebron and said, Behold, we are your bone and your flesh. Two inches times passed, even when Saul was king, you were the one who led out and brought in Israel, and the Lord your God said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel, and you shall be leader over my people Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and David made a covenant with them in Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel, in accordance with the word of the Lord through Samuel. Then David and all Israel went to Jerusalem, that is, Jebus, and the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, were there. The inhabitants of Jebus said to David, You shall not enter here. Nevertheless David took the mountain stronghold of Zion, that is, the city of David. Now David had said, Whoever is first to kill a Jebusite shall be chief and commander. Joab the son of Zeruiah went up first, so he became chief. Then David lived in the stronghold, therefore it was called the city of David. He built the city all around, from the millow to the surrounding area, and Joab repaired the rest of the city. And David became greater and greater, for the Lord of armies was with him. Now these are the heads of the mighty men whom David had, who remained faithful to him in his kingdom, together with all Israel, to make him king, in accordance with the word of the Lord concerning Israel. These constitute the list of David's mighty men, Jashabim, the son of a Hachmanite, the chief of the thirty, he wielded his spear against three hundred whom he killed at one time. After him was Eleazar the son of Dodo, the Ahohite, who was one of the three mighty men. Thirteen he was with David at Padamon when the Philistines were gathered together there to battle, and there was a plot of land full of barley, and the people fled from the Philistines. But they took their stand in the midst of the plot and defended it, and defeated the Philistines, and the Lord saved them with a great victory. Now three of the thirty chief men went down to the rock to David, into the cave of Adullam, while the army of the Philistines was camping in the valley of Rephaim. David was then in the stronghold, while the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David had a craving and said, Oh that someone would give me water to drink from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. So the three broke through the camp of the Philistines and drew water from the well of Bethlehem which was by the gate, and took it and brought it to David, however, David would not drink it, but poured it out to the Lord. And he said, Far be it from me before my God that I would do this. Shall I drink the blood of these men who went at the risk of their lives? For they brought it at the risk of their lives. 
therefore he would not drink it. The three mighty men did these things. As for Abzai the brother of Joab, he was chief of the thirty, and he wielded his spear against three hundred and killed them, and he had a name as well as the thirty. Of the three in the second rank he was the most honored, and he became their commander, however, he did not attain the reputation of the first three. Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, the son of a warrior of Kebzeel, mighty in deeds, struck and killed the two sons of Ariel of Moab. He also went down and struck and killed a lion inside a pit on a snowy day. And he killed an Egyptian, a man of great stature five cubits tall. Now in the Egyptian's hand was a spear like a weaver's beam, but he went down to him with a club and snatched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. Benaiah the son of Jehoiada did these things, and had a name as well as the three mighty men. Behold, he was honored among the thirty, but he did not attain the reputation of the first three, and David appointed him over his bodyguard. Now the mighty men of the armies were Asahel the brother of Joab, Elhanan the son of Dodo of Bethlehem, Shamoth the Hararite, Helez the Pelonite, Ira the son of Ikesh the Tekoite, Abizer the Anathathite, Sibekai the Hushathite, Eli the Ahohite, Maharai the Netophathite, Helaid the son of Baana the Netophathite, Ithai the son of Ribai of Gibeah of the sons of Benjamin, Benaiah the Parathonite, Hurai of the brooks of Gash, Abel the Arbathite, Asmaveth the Baharamite, Eliabah the Shalbanite, the sons of Hashem the Jizanite, Jonathan the son of Shaji the Hararite, Ahiam the son of Sacher the Hararite, Eliphal the son of Uar, Hefer the Mesherathite, Ahijah the Pelonite, Hezro the Carmelite, Narai the son of Ezbai, Joel the brother of Nathan, Mibhar the son of Hagri, Zelek the Ammonite, Naharai the Barathite, the armor-bearer of Joab the son of Zeruiah, Ira the Ithrite, Garib the Ithrite, Uriah the Hittite, Zabad the son of Alei, Adina the son of Sheza the Reubenite, a chief of the Reubenites, and thirty with him. Hanan the son of Makkah and Joshaphat the Mithnite. Uzziah the Ashtarathite, Shammah and Jeel the sons of Hotham the Arrowerite. Jediel the son of Shimri and his brother Joha the Tezite. Eliel the Mahavite and Jeribai and Joshaviah, the sons of Elnam, Ithma the Moabite. Eliel, Obed, and Jajel the Mezabate. Now these are the men who came to David at Ziklag, while he was still restricted because of Saul the son of Kish, and they were among the mighty men who helped him in war. They were equipped with bows, using both the right hand and the left to sling stones and shoot arrows with the bow, they were Saul's kinsmen from Benjamin. The chief was Ahizer, then Josh, the sons of Shema the Gibeathite, and Jeziel and Pelet, the sons of Asmaveth, and Baraka, and Jehu the Anathathite, and Ishmael the Gibeonite, a mighty man among the thirty, and in charge of the thirty. Then Jeremiah, Jehaziel, Johanan, Josabad the Gedarathite, Eluzai, Jeremoth, Beeliah, Shemariah, Shephatiah the Herophite, Elkanah, Ishia, Azrael, Joser, Jashabim, the Korahites, and Joela and Zebadiah, the sons of Jeraham of Geder. From the Gadites valiant mighty men went over to David at the stronghold in the wilderness, men trained for war who could handle a large shield and spear, whose faces were like the faces of lions, and they were as swift as the gazelles on the mountains. Ezer was the first, Obadiah the second, Eliab the third, Mishmana the fourth, Jeremiah the fifth, Atai the sixth, Eliel the seventh, Johanan the eighth, 
Elzabad the ninth, Jeremiah the tenth, and Machbani the eleventh. These men from the sons of Gad were captains of the army, the one who was least was equal to a hundred, and the greatest, to a thousand. These are the ones who crossed the Jordan in the first month, when it was overflowing all its banks, and they put to flight all those in the valleys, to the east and to the west. Then some of the sons of Benjamin and Judah came to the stronghold to David. David went out to meet them, and said to them, If you come peacefully to help me, my heart shall be united with you, but if to betray me to my enemies, since there is no wrong in my hands, may the God of our fathers look on it and decide. Then the Spirit covered Amasai like clothing, the chief of the thirty, and he said, We are yours, David, and are with you, son of Jesse. Peace, peace to you, and peace to him who helps you, indeed, your God helps you. Then David received them and made them captains of the troops. From Manasseh some also defected to David when he was about to go to battle with the Philistines against Saul. But they did not help them, because the governors of the Philistines sent him away after consultation, saying, At the cost of our heads he might defect to his master Saul. Twenty as he was going to Ziklag, men from Manasseh defected to him, Adna, Josabad, Gedeel, Michael, Josabad, Elihu, and Zilathai, captains of thousands who belonged to Manasseh. They helped David against the band of raiders, for they were all valiant mighty men, and were captains in the army. For day by day men came to David to help him, until there was a great army like the army of God. Now these are the numbers of the divisions equipped for war, who came to David at Hebron, to turn the kingdom of Saul to him, according to the word of the Lord. The sons of Judah who carried shield and spear numbered 6,800, equipped for war. From the sons of Simeon, valiant mighty men of war, 7,100. From the sons of Levi, 4,600. Now Jehoiada was the leader of the house of Aaron, and with him were 3,700. Also Zadok, a young valiant mighty man, and from his father's house, twenty-two captains. From the sons of Benjamin, Saul's kinsmen, three thousand, for until now the majority of them had kept their allegiance to the house of Saul. From the sons of Ephraim twenty thousand eight hundred, valiant mighty men, famous men in their father's households. From the half-tribe of Manasseh eighteen thousand, who were designated by name to come and make David king. From the sons of Issachar, men who understood the times, with knowledge of what Israel should do, their chiefs were two hundred, and all their kinsmen were at their command. From Zebulun, there were fifty thousand who went out in the army, who could draw up in battle formation with all kinds of weapons of war and helped David with an undivided heart. From Naphtali there were a thousand captains, and with them thirty-seven thousand with shield and spear. From the Danites who could draw up in battle formation, there were twenty-eight thousand six hundred. From Asher there were forty thousand who went out in the army to draw up in battle formation. From the other side of the Jordan, from the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, there were one hundred and twenty thousand with all kinds of weapons of war for the battle. All of these, being men of war who helped in battle formation, came to Hebron with a perfect heart to make David king over all Israel, and all the rest of Israel also were of one mind to make David king. They were there with David for three days, eating and drinking, for their kinsmen had prepared for them. Moreover, those who were near to them, as far as Issachar, Zebulun, and Naphtali, brought food on donkeys, camels, mules, and on oxen, great quantities of flour cakes, fig cakes and bunches of raisins, wine, oil, oxen, and sheep. There was joy indeed in Israel. 
Then David consulted with the captains of the thousands and the hundreds, with every leader. 2 David said to all the assembly of Israel, If it seems good to you, and if it is from the Lord our God, let us send word everywhere to our kinsmen who remain in all the land of Israel, and to the priests and Levites who are with them in their cities with pasture lands, that they meet with us, three and let us bring back the ark of our God to us, since we did not seek it in the days of Saul. Then all the assembly said that they would do so, for this was right in the eyes of all the people. So David assembled all Israel together, from the Shear of Egypt to the entrance of Hamath, to bring the ark of God from kiriath Jerim. David and all Israel went up to Bala, that is, to kiriath Jerim, which belongs to Judah, to bring up from there the ark of God, the Lord who is enthroned above the cherubim, where his name is called. And they carried the ark of God on a new cart from the house of Abinadab, and Uzzah and Ahio drove the cart. David and all Israel were celebrating before God with all their might, with songs and with lyres, harps, tambourines, cymbals, and trumpets. When they came to the threshing floor of Chidon, Uzzah put out his hand to hold the ark, because the oxen nearly overturned it. But the anger of the Lord burned against Uzzah, so he struck him because he had put out his hand toward the ark, and he died there before God. Then David became angry because of the Lord's outburst against Uzzah, and he called that place Perez Uzzah as it is to this day. David was afraid of God that day, saying, How can I bring the ark of God home to me? So David did not take the ark with him to the city of David, but took it aside to the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. And the ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house for three months, and the Lord blessed the family of Obed-Edom and all that he had. Now Hiram king of Tyre sent messengers to David with cedar trees, masons, and carpenters, to build a house for him. And David realized that the Lord had established him as king over Israel, and that his kingdom was highly exalted, for the sake of his people Israel. Then David took more wives in Jerusalem, and David fathered more sons and daughters. For these are the names of the children born to him in Jerusalem, Shamua, Shobab, Nathan, Solomon, Ibhar, Elishua, Elplet, Noga, Nepheg, Japhia, Elishama, Biliada, and Eliphalet. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over all Israel, all the Philistines went up in search of David, and David heard about it and went out against them. Now the Philistines had come and carried out a raid in the valley of Rephaim. David inquired of God, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? And will you hand them over to me? Then the Lord said to him, Go up, for I will hand them over to you. So they came up to Baal-perazim, and David defeated them there, and David said, God has broken through my enemies by my hand, like the breakthrough of waters. Therefore they named that place Baal-perazim. They abandoned their gods there, so David gave the order and they were burned with fire. The Philistines carried out yet another raid in the valley. David inquired again of God, and God said to him, You shall not go up after them, circle around behind them and come at them in front of the Baca shrubs. When you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the Baca shrubs, then you shall go out to battle, for God will have gone out before you to strike the army of the Philistines. David did just as God had commanded him, and they defeated the army of the Philistines from Gibeon even as far as Gezer. Then the fame of David spread in all the lands, and the Lord brought the fear of him on all the nations. Now David built houses for himself in the city of David, and he prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched a tent for it. Then David said, No one is to carry the ark of God except the Levites, 
For the Lord chose them to carry the ark of the Lord and to serve him forever. And David assembled all Israel at Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the Lord to its place which he had prepared for it. David gathered together the sons of Aaron and the Levites. Of the sons of Kohath, Uriel the chief, and one hundred and twenty of his relatives. Of the sons of Merari, Asiah the chief, and two hundred and twenty of his relatives. Of the sons of Gershom, Joel the chief, and one hundred and thirty of his relatives. Of the sons of Elizaphan, Shemaiah the chief, and two hundred of his relatives. Of the sons of Hebron, Eliel the chief, and eighty of his relatives. Of the sons of Uzziel, Ammonadab the chief, and one hundred and twelve of his relatives. Then David called for the priests Zadok and Abiathar, and for the Levites, for Uriel, Asiah, Joel, Shemaiah, Eliel, and Ammonadab. And he said to them, You are the heads of the Fathers' households of the Levites, consecrate yourselves, you and your relatives, so that you may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel to the place that I have prepared for it. Because you did not carry it at the first, the Lord our God made an outburst against us, since we did not seek him according to the ordinance. So the priests and the Levites consecrated themselves to bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel. The sons of the Levites carried the ark of God on their shoulders with the poles on them, just as Moses had commanded in accordance with the word of the Lord. Then David spoke to the chiefs of the Levites to appoint their relatives as the singers, with musical instruments, harps, lyres, and cymbals, playing to raise sounds of joy. So the Levites appointed Heman the son of Joel, and from his relatives, Azaf the son of Berechiah, and from the sons of Merari their relatives, Ethan the son of Keshiah. And with them their relatives of the second rank, Zechariah, Ben, Jaziel, Shemiramoth, Jehiel, Uni, Eliab, Benaiah, Messiah, Mattathiah, Eliphelahu, Mekniah, Obedidim, and Jeel, the gatekeepers. So the singers, Heman, Azaf, and Ethan, were appointed to sound aloud cymbals of bronze. And Zechariah, Aziel, Shemiramoth, Jehiel, Buni, Eliab, Messiah, and Benaiah, with harps tuned to Alamoth. And Mattathiah, Eliphelahu, Mekniah, Obedidim, Jeel, and Azaziah, to lead with lyres tuned to the Sheminith. Shenaniah, chief of the Levites, was in charge of the singing, he gave instruction in singing because he was skillful. Berechiah and Elkanah were gatekeepers for the ark. Shebaniah, Joshaphat, Nethanel, Amasai, Zechariah, Benaiah, and Eliezer, the priests, blew the trumpets before the ark of God. Obadidim and Jehiah also were gatekeepers for the ark. So it was David, with the elders of Israel and the captains of thousands, who went to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from the house of Obadidim with joy. Because God was helping the Levites who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, they sacrificed seven bulls and seven rams. Now David was clothed with a robe of fine linen with all the Levites who were carrying the Ark, and the singers, and Shenaniah the leader of the singing with the singers. David also wore an ephod of linen. So all Israel brought up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord with shouting, and with the sound of the horn, with trumpets, with loud-sounding cymbals, with harps and lyres. When the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came to the city of David, Michael the daughter of Saul looked out of the window and saw King David dancing and celebrating, and she despised him in her heart. And they brought in the ark of God and placed it inside the tent which David had pitched for it, and they offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before God. When David had finished offering the burnt offering and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. 
Then he distributed to every one of Israel, both men and women, to every one a loaf of bread, a portion of meat, and a raisin cake. He appointed some of the Levites as ministers before the ark of the Lord, to celebrate and to thank and praise the Lord God of Israel, five Azaph the chief, and second to him Zechariah, then Jeel, Shemiramoth, Jehiel, Mattathiah, Eliab, Benaiah, Obadidim, and Jeel, with musical instruments, harps, and lyres, also Azaph played loud-sounding cymbals. And the priests Benaiah and Jehaziel blew trumpets continually before the Ark of the Covenant of God. Then on that day David first assigned Azaph and his relatives to give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make his deeds known among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, speak of all his wonders. Boast in his holy name, let the heart of those who seek the Lord be joyful. Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face continually. Remember his wonderful deeds which he has done, his marvels and the judgments from his mouth. You descendants of Israel his servant, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God, his judgments are in all the earth. Remember his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. The covenant which he made with Abraham, and his oath to Isaac. He also confirmed it to Jacob as a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant saying, To you I will give the land of Canaan, as the portion of your inheritance. When they were only a few in number, very few, and strangers in it. And they wandered from nation to nation, and from one kingdom to another people. He allowed no one to oppress them, and he rebuked kings for their sakes, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones, and do not harm my prophets. Sing to the Lord, all the earth, proclaim good news of his salvation from day to day. Tell of his glory among the nations, his wonderful deeds among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, he also is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him, Strength and joy are in his place. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name, bring an offering, and come before him, worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before him, all the earth, indeed, the world is firmly established, it will not be moved. Let the heavens be joyful, and the earth rejoice, and let them say among the nations, The Lord reigns. Let the sea roar, and everything it contains, let the field rejoice, and everything that is in it. Then the trees of the forest will sing for joy in the presence of the Lord, for He is coming to judge the earth. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His faithfulness is everlasting. Then say, Save us, God of our salvation, and gather us and save us from the nations, to give thanks to your holy name, and glory in your praise. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Then all the people said, Amen, and praised the Lord. So he left Azaph and his relatives there before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, to minister before the ark continually, as every day's work required. And Obadidim with his sixty-eight relatives, Obadidim, the son of Jeduthun, and Hosea as gatekeepers. He left Zadok the priest and his relatives the priests before the tabernacle of the Lord in the high place which was at Gibeon. To offer burnt offerings to the Lord on the altar of burnt offering continually morning and evening, even according to everything that is written in the law of the Lord, which he commanded Israel. With them were Heman and Jeduthun, and the rest who were chosen, 
who were designated by name, to give thanks to the Lord, because his kindness is everlasting. And with them were Heman and Jeduthun with trumpets and cymbals for those who were to play them, and with instruments for the songs of God, and the sons of Jeduthun for the gate. Then all the people departed, each to his house, and David returned to bless his household. And it came about, when David lived in his house, that David said to Nathan the prophet, Look, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of the covenant of the Lord is under tent curtains. Two then Nathan said to David, Do whatever is in your heart, for God is with you. But it happened that same night, that the word of God came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell David my servant, this is what the Lord says, You shall not build a house for me to dwell in. For I have not dwelt in a house since the day that I brought up Israel to this day, but I have gone from tent to tent and from one dwelling place to another. In all places where I have walked with all Israel, have I spoken a word with any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, this is what you shall say to my servant David, This is what the Lord of armies says, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be leader over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and have eliminated all your enemies from you, and I will make for you a name like the name of the great ones who are on the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them there, so that they may live in their own place and not tremble with anxiety again, and the wicked will not make them waste away any more as they did previously. Even from the day that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel. And I will subdue all your enemies. Moreover, I tell you that the Lord will build a house for you. When your days are fulfilled that you must go to be with your fathers, then I will set up one of your descendants after you, who will be from your sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build for me a house, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father and he shall be my son, and I will not take my favor away from him, as I took it from him who was before you. But I will settle him in my house and in my kingdom forever, and his throne will be established forever. According to all these words and according to all of this vision, so Nathan spoke to David. Then King David came in and sat before the Lord, and said, Who am I, Lord God, and what is my house that you have brought me this far? This was a small thing in your eyes, God, but you have spoken of your servant's house for a great while to come, and have viewed me according to the standard of a person of high degree, Lord God. What more can David still say to you concerning the honor bestowed on your servant? For you know your servant. Lord, for your servant's sake, and according to your own heart, you have accomplished all this greatness, to make known all these great things. Lord, there is none like you, nor is there any God besides you, according to everything that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation on the earth is like your people Israel, whom God went to redeem for himself as a people, to make for you a name by great and awesome things, by driving out nations from before your people, whom you redeemed from Egypt? For you have made your people Israel your own people forever, and you, Lord, became their God. Now, Lord, let the word that you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning his house be established forever, and do just as you have spoken. Let your name be established and be great forever, saying, The Lord of armies is the God of Israel, a God to Israel, and the house of your servant David is established before you. For you, my God, have revealed to your servant that you will build him a house, therefore your servant has found courage to pray before you. Now, Lord, you are God, and have promised this good thing to your servant. And now you have decided to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue forever before you, for you, 
Lord, have blessed, and it is blessed forever. Now after this it came about that David defeated the Philistines and subdued them and took Gath and its towns from the hand of the Philistines. And he defeated Moab, and the Moabites became servants to David, bringing tribute. David also defeated Hadadezer king of Zobah as far as Hamath, as he went to establish his rule to the river Euphrates. David took from him a thousand chariots and seven thousand horsemen and twenty thousand foot soldiers, and David hamstrung almost all the chariot horses, but left enough of them for a hundred chariots. When the Arameans of Damascus came to help Hadadezer king of Zobah, David killed twenty-two thousand men of the Arameans. Then David put garrisons among the Arameans of Damascus, and the Arameans became servants to David, bringing tribute. And the Lord helped David wherever he went. And David took the shields of gold which were carried by the servants of Hadadezer, and brought them to Jerusalem. Also from Tibhath and Cun, cities of Hadadezer, David took a very large amount of bronze, with which Solomon made the bronze sea and the pillars and the bronze utensils. Now when two king of Hamath heard that David had defeated all the army of Hadadezer king of Zobah, he sent Hadaram his son to king David to greet him and to bless him, because he had fought against Hadadezer and had defeated him, for Hadadezer had been at war with two. And Hadaram brought all kinds of articles of gold and silver and bronze. King David also dedicated these to the Lord, with the silver and the gold which he had carried away from all the nations, from Edom, Moab, the sons of Ammon, the Philistines, and from Amalek. Moreover, Abishai the son of Zeruiah defeated eighteen thousand Edomites in the Valley of Salt. Then he put garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became servants to David. And the Lord helped David wherever he went. So David reigned over all Israel, and he administered justice and righteousness for all his people. Joab the son of Zeruiah was over the army, and Jehoshaphat the son of Ahalad was secretary. And Zadok the son of Ahitub and Abimelech the son of Abiathar were priests, and Shavsha was secretary. And Benaiah the son of Jehoiada was over the Cherethites and the Pelethites, and the sons of David were chiefs at the king's side. Now it came about after this, that Naash the king of the sons of Ammon died, and his son became king in his place. Then David said, I will show kindness to Hanan the son of Naash, because his father showed kindness to me. So David sent messengers to console him concerning his father. And David's servants came into the land of the sons of Ammon to Hanan to console him. But the commanders among the sons of Ammon said to Hanan, Do you think that David is honoring your father, in that he has sent comforters to you? Have his servants not come to you to search, to demolish, and to spy out the land? So Hanan took David's servants and shaved them, and cut off their robes in the middle as far as their buttocks, and sent them away. Then certain people went and told David about the men. And he sent messengers to meet them, because the men were very humiliated. And the king said, Stay at Jericho until your beards grow back, then return. When the sons of Ammon saw that they had made themselves repulsive to David, Hanan and the sons of Ammon sent a thousand talents of silver to hire for themselves chariots and horsemen from Mesopotamia, Aramaca, and Zobah. So they hired for themselves thirty-two thousand chariots, and the king of Maka and his people, who came and camped opposite Medeba. And the sons of Ammon gathered together from their cities and came to the battle. When David heard about it, he sent Joab and all the army, the mighty men. The sons of Ammon came out and drew up in battle formation at the entrance of the city, and the kings who had come were by themselves in the field. 
Now when Joab saw that the battle was set against him at the front and at the rear, he selected warriors from all the choice men in Israel and lined them up against the Arameans. 11 But the remainder of the people he placed under the command of Abzai his brother, and they lined up against the sons of Ammon. He said, If the Arameans are too strong for me, then you shall help me, but if the sons of Ammon are too strong for you, then I will help you. Be strong, and let's show ourselves courageous for the benefit of our people and the cities of our God, and may the Lord do what is good in his sight. So Joab and the people who were with him advanced to battle against the Arameans, and they fled from him. When the sons of Ammon saw that the Arameans had fled, they also fled from his brother Abshai and entered the city. Then Joab came to Jerusalem. When the Arameans saw that they had been defeated by Israel, they sent messengers and brought out the Arameans who were beyond the Euphrates River, with Shaphak the commander of the army of Hadadezer leading them. When it was reported to David, he gathered all Israel together and crossed the Jordan, and came upon them and drew up in formation against them. And when David drew up in battle formation against the Arameans, they fought against him. And the Arameans fled from Israel, and David killed of the Arameans seven thousand charioteers and forty thousand foot soldiers, and he put Shaphak the commander of the army to death. So when the servants of Hadadezer saw that they had been defeated by Israel, they made peace with David and served him. So the Arameans were not willing to help the sons of Ammon anymore. Then it happened in the spring, at the time when kings go out to battle, that Joab led out the army and ravaged the land of the sons of Ammon, and came and besieged Rabbah. But David stayed in Jerusalem. And Joab struck Rabbah and overthrew it. David took the crown of their king from his head, and he found it to weigh a talent of gold, and there was a precious stone in it, and it was placed on David's head. And he brought out the spoils of the city, a very great amount. He brought out the people who were in it, and put them to work at saws, iron picks, and axes. And David did the same to all the cities of the sons of Ammon. Then David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. Now it came about after this, that war broke out at Gezer with the Philistines, then Sibachai the Hushathite killed Sippai, one of the descendants of the giants, and they were subdued. And there was war with the Philistines again, and Elhanan the son of Jair killed Lami the brother of Goliath the Gittite, the shaft of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. Again there was war at Gath, where there was a man of great stature who had twenty-four fingers and toes, six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, and he also was descended from the giants. When he taunted Israel, Jonathan the son of Shermaiah, David's brother, killed him. These were descended from the giants in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Then Satan stood up against Israel and incited David to count Israel. So David said to Joab and to the leaders of the people, Go, count Israel from Beersheba to Dan, and bring me word so that I may know their number. But Joab said, May the Lord add to his people a hundred times as many as they are. My lord the king, are they not all my lord's servants? Why does my lord seek this thing? Why should he be a cause of guilt to Israel? Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab. Therefore, Joab departed and went throughout Israel, and came to Jerusalem. Then Joab gave the number of the census of the people to David. Israel was one million one hundred thousand men in all who drew the sword, and Judah was four hundred and seventy thousand men who drew the sword. But he did not count Levi and Benjamin among them, because the king's command was abhorrent to Joab. Now God was displeased with this thing, so he struck Israel. 
David said to God, I have sinned greatly, by doing this thing. But now, please overlook your servant's guilt, for I have behaved very foolishly. The Lord spoke to Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and speak to David, saying, This is what the Lord says, I extend to you three choices, choose for yourself one of them, which I will do to you. So Gad came to David and said to him, This is what the Lord says, Take for yourself. Three years of famine, or three months to be swept away before your foes while the sword of your enemies overtakes you, or else three days of the sword of the Lord, a plague in the land, and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout the territory of Israel. Now, therefore, consider what answer I shall bring back to him who sent me. David said to Gad, I am in great distress, please let me fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are very great. But do not let me fall into human hands. So the Lord sent a plague on Israel, seventy thousand men of Israel fell. And God sent an angel to Jerusalem to destroy it, but as he was about to destroy it, the Lord saw and was sorry about the catastrophe, and said to the destroying angel, It is enough, now relax your hand. And the angel of the Lord was standing by the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. Then David raised his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord standing between earth and heaven, with his drawn sword in his hand stretched out over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders, covered with sackcloth, fell on their faces. And David said to God, Is it not I who commanded to count the people? Indeed, I am the one who has sinned and acted very wickedly, but these sheep, what have they done? Lord, my God, just let your hand be against me and my father's household, and not against your people as a plague. Then the angel of the Lord commanded Gad to say to David, that David was to go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. So David went up at the word of Gad, which he spoke in the name of the Lord. Now Ornan turned back and saw the angel, and his four sons who were with him hid themselves. And Ornan was threshing wheat. As David came to Ornan, Ornan looked and saw David, and went out from the threshing floor and prostrated himself to David with his face to the ground. Then David said to Ornan, Give me the sight of this threshing floor, so that I may build on it an altar to the Lord, you shall give it to me for the full price, so that the plague may be brought to a halt from the people. But Ornan said to David, Take it for yourself, and may my lord the king do what is good in his sight. See, I am giving the oxen for burnt offerings, and the threshing sledges for wood and the wheat for the grain offering, I am giving it all. Nevertheless, King David said to Ornan, No, but I will certainly buy it for the full price, for I will not take what is yours for the Lord, nor offer a burnt offering which costs me nothing. So David gave Ornan six hundred shekels of gold by weight for the site. Then David built an altar there to the Lord, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. And he called to the Lord, and he answered him with fire from heaven on the altar of burnt offering. The Lord commanded the angel, and he returned his sword to its sheath. At that time, when David saw that the Lord had answered him on the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite, he offered sacrifice there. For the tabernacle of the Lord, which Moses had made in the wilderness, and the altar of burnt offering were on the high place at Gibeon at that time. But David could not go before it to inquire of God, for he was terrified by the sword of the angel of the Lord. Then David said, This is the house of the Lord God, and this is the altar of burnt offering for Israel. So David gave orders to gather the strangers who were in the land of Israel, and he set stonecutters to cut out stones to build the house of God. And David prepared large quantities of iron to make the nails for the doors of the gates and for the clamps, 
and more bronze than could be weighed. And timbers of cedar beyond number, for the Sidonians and Tyrians brought large quantities of cedar timber to David. David said, My son Solomon is young and inexperienced, and the house that is to be built for the Lord shall be exceedingly magnificent, famous, and glorious throughout the lands. Therefore I now will make preparations for it. So David made ample preparations before his death. Then he called for his son Solomon, and commanded him to build a house for the Lord God of Israel. David said to Solomon, My son, I had intended to build a house for the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came to me, saying, You have shed much blood and have waged great wars, you shall not build a house to my name, because you have shed so much blood on the earth before me. Behold, a son will be born to you, who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies on every side, for his name will be Solomon, and I will give peace and quiet to Israel in his days. He shall build a house for my name, and he shall be my son and I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now, my son, the Lord be with you that you may be successful, and build the house of the Lord your God just as he has spoken concerning you. Only the Lord give you discretion and understanding, and put you in charge of Israel, so that you may keep the law of the Lord your God. Then you will prosper, if you are careful to follow the statutes and the ordinances which the Lord commanded Moses concerning Israel. Be strong and courageous, do not fear nor be dismayed. Now behold, with great pains I have prepared for the house of the Lord a hundred thousand talents of gold and a million talents of silver, and bronze and iron beyond measure, for they are in great quantity, I have also prepared timber and stone, and you may add to that. Moreover there are many workmen with you, stonecutters, masons of stone, and carpenters, and all of them are skillful in every kind of work. Of the gold, silver, bronze, and iron there is no limit. Arise and work, and may the Lord be with you. David also commanded all the leaders of Israel to help his son Solomon, saying, Is the Lord your God not with you? And has he not given you rest on every side? For he has handed over to me the inhabitants of the land, and the land is subdued before the Lord and before his people. Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God, then arise, and build the sanctuary of the Lord God, so that you may bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy vessels of God into the house that is to be built for the name of the Lord. Now when David reached old age, he made his son Solomon king over Israel. And he gathered together all the leaders of Israel with the priests and the Levites. Now the Levites were counted from thirty years old and upward, and their number by head count of men was thirty-eight thousand. Of these, twenty-four thousand were to oversee the work of the house of the Lord, and six thousand were officers and judges. And four thousand were gatekeepers, and four thousand were praising the Lord with the instruments which David made for giving praise. David divided them into divisions according to the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Of the Jershonites there were Laden and Shimi. The sons of Laden were Jehiel the first, and Zetham and Joel, three. The sons of Shimi were Shelemoth, Haziel, and Haran, three. These were the heads of the Fathers' households of Laden. The sons of Shimi were Jehoth, Zena, Jush, and Bariah. These four were the sons of Shimi. Jehoth was the first and Ziza the second, but Jush and Bariah did not have many sons, so they became a father's household, one group for duty. The sons of Kohath were four in number, Amram, Izar, Hebron, and Uzziel. The sons of Amram were Aaron and Moses. 
And Aaron was set apart to sanctify him as most holy, he and his sons forever, to burn incense before the Lord, to serve him and bless in his name forever. But as for Moses, the man of God, his sons were named among the tribe of Levi. The sons of Moses were Gershom and Eliezer. The son of Gershom was Shabuel the chief. The son of Eliezer was Rehabiah the chief, and Eliezer had no other sons, but the sons of Rehabiah were very many. The son of Azar was Shelemith the chief. The sons of Hebron were Jeriah the first, Mariah the second, Jehaziel the third, and Jechamim the fourth. The sons of Uzziel were Micah the first and Ishia the second. The sons of Merari were Mali and Mushi. The sons of Mali were Eliezer and Kish. Eliezer died and had no sons, but only daughters, so their relatives, the sons of Kish, took them as wives. The sons of Mushi were three, Mali, Eder, and Jerimoth. These were the sons of Levi according to their fathers' households, the heads of the fathers' households of those among them who were counted, in the number of names by their head count, doing the work for the service of the house of the Lord, from twenty years old and upward. For David said, The Lord God of Israel has given rest to his people, and he dwells in Jerusalem forever. Also, the Levites will no longer need to carry the tabernacle and all its utensils for its service. For by the last words of David, the sons of Levi were counted from twenty years old and upward. For their office is to assist the sons of Aaron with the service of the house of the Lord, in the courtyards and in the chambers, and in the purification of all holy things, and the work of the service of the house of God. And with the showbread, and the fine flour for a grain offering, and unleavened wafers, or what is baked in the pan or what is well mixed, and all measures of volume and size. They are to stand every morning to thank and to praise the Lord, and likewise at evening. And to offer all burnt offerings to the Lord, on the Sabbaths, the new moons and the appointed festivals, in the number determined by the ordinance concerning them, continually before the Lord. So they are to perform the duties of the tent of meeting, the holy place, and of assisting the sons of Aaron their relatives, for the service of the house of the Lord. Now the divisions of the descendants of Aaron were these, the sons of Aaron were Nadab, Abihu, Eliezer, and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died before their father and had no sons. So Eliezer and Ithamar served as priests. David, with Zadok of the sons of Eliezer and Ahimelech of the sons of Ithamar, divided them according to their offices for their ministry. Since more chief men were found from the descendants of Eliezer than the descendants of Ithamar, they divided them this way, there were sixteen heads of Fathers' households of the descendants of Eliezer, and eight of the descendants of Ithamar according to their Fathers' households. So they were divided by lot, the one as the other, for they were officers of the sanctuary and officers of God, both from the descendants of Eliezer and the descendants of Ithamar. Shemaiah, the son of Nethanel the scribe, from the Levites, recorded them in the presence of the king, the leaders, Zadok the priest, Ahimelech the son of Abiathar, and the heads of the fathers' households of the priests and the Levites, one father's household taken for Eliezer and one taken for Ithamar. Now the first lot came out for Jehoiarib, the second for Jediah, the third for Haram, the fourth for Seorim, the fifth for Malchijah, the sixth for Majamin the seventh for Hakaz, the eighth for Abijah, the ninth for Jeshua, the tenth for Shechaniah, the eleventh for Eliashib, the twelfth for Jachim, the thirteenth for Huppa, the fourteenth for Jeshabib, the fifteenth for Bilga, the sixteenth for Immer, the seventeenth for Hezer, the eighteenth for Hapitzes, 
The 19th for Pethahiah, the 20th for Jehezkel. The 21st for Jachin, the 22nd for Gamal. The 23rd for Deliah, and the 24th for Maziah. These were their offices for their ministry when they entered the house of the Lord according to the ordinance given to them through their father Aaron, just as the Lord God of Israel had commanded him. Now for the rest of the sons of Levi, of the sons of Amram, Shubael, of the sons of Shubael, Judiah. Of Rehabiah, of the sons of Rehabiah, Ishia, the first. Of the Israelites, Shelomoth, of the sons of Shelomoth, Jehoth. The sons of Hebron, Jeria the first, Amariah the second, Jehaziel the third, Jechamim the fourth. Of the sons of Uzziel, Micah, of the sons of Micah, Shamir. The brother of Micah, Ishia, of the sons of Ishia, Zechariah. The sons of Merari, Mali and Mushi, the sons of Josiah, Bino. The sons of Merari, by Josiah were Bino, Shoam, Zachar, and Ibri. By Mali, Eliezer, who had no sons. By Kish, the sons of Kish, Jeremiel. The sons of Mushi, Mali, Eder, and Jeremoth. These were the sons of the Levites according to their father's households. These also cast lots just as their relatives, the sons of Aaron did in the presence of David the king, Zadok, Ahimelech, and the heads of the father's households of the priests and of the Levites, the head of father's households as well as those of his younger brother. Moreover, David and the commanders of the army set apart for the service some of the sons of Azaph, Heman, and Juduthan, who were to prophesy with lyres, harps, and cymbals, and the number of those who performed this service was. Of the sons of Azaph, Zachar, Joseph, Nethaniah, and Asherila, the sons of Azaph were under the direction of Azaph, who prophesied under the direction of the king. Of Juduthan, the sons of Juduthan, Gedalia, Ziri, Jeshea, Shimi, Hashabiah, and Mattathiah, six in all, under the direction of their father Juduthan with the harp, who prophesied in giving thanks and praising the Lord. Of Heman, the sons of Heman, Bukia, Matania, Uzziel, Shabul, and Jeremoth, Hananiah, Hanani, Eliatha, Gedalti, and Romamtiezer, Joshbakasha, Malothi, Hothar, and Mahaziath. All these were the sons of Heman the king's seer to exalt him according to the words of God, for God gave fourteen sons and three daughters to Heman. All of these were under the direction of their father to sing in the house of the Lord, with cymbals, harps, and lyres, for the service of the house of God. Azaph, Juduthan, and Heman were under the direction of the king. Their number who were trained in singing to the Lord, with their relatives, all who were skillful, was 288. They cast lots for their duties, all alike, the small as well as the great, the teacher as well as the pupil. Now the first lot came out for Azaph to Joseph, the second for Gedalia, he with his relatives and sons were twelve. The third to Zachar, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The fourth to Isri, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The fifth to Nethaniah, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The sixth to Bukiah, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The seventh to Jeshurila, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The eighth to Jeshaya, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The ninth to Matania, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The tenth to Shimi, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The eleventh to Azrael, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The twelfth to Hashabiah, his sons and his relatives, twelve. For the thirteenth, Shubael, his sons and his relatives, 12.
12. For the fourteenth, Mattathiah, his sons and his relatives, 12. For the fifteenth to Jeremoth, his sons and his relatives, 12. For the sixteenth to Hananiah, his sons and his relatives, 12. For the seventeenth to Joshbakasha, his sons and his relatives, 12. For the eighteenth to Hanani, his sons and his relatives, 12. For the nineteenth to Malothi, his sons and his relatives, 12. For the twentieth to Eliatha, his sons and his relatives, 12. For the twenty-first to Hothar, his sons and his relatives, 12. For the twenty-second to Gedalti, his sons and his relatives, 12. For the twenty-third to Mahaziath, his sons and his relatives, 12. For the twenty-fourth to Romantiezer, his sons and his relatives, 12. For the divisions of the gatekeepers there were of the Korahites, Meshalemia the son of Kore, of the sons of Azaph. Meshalemia had sons, Zechariah the firstborn, Gedeel the second, Zebediah the third, Japhneel the fourth, Elam the fifth, Johanan the sixth, and Elihoanai the seventh. Obadidam had sons, Shemaiah the firstborn, Jehazabad the second, Joah the third, Sacher the fourth, Nethanel the fifth, Amiel the sixth, Issachar the seventh, and Pulathi the eighth, God had indeed blessed him. Also to his son Shemaiah's sons were born who ruled over the house of their father, for they were valiant mighty men. The sons of Shemaiah were Othni, Rephael, Obed, and Elzabad, whose brothers, Elihu and Semechiah, were valiant men. All these were of the sons of Obed-Edom, they and their sons and relatives were able men with strength for the service, 62 from Obed-Edom. Meshalemia had sons and relatives, eighteen valiant men. Also Hosea, one of the sons of Merari had sons, Shimri the first, although he was not the firstborn, his father made him first. Hilkiah the second, Tebaliah the third, and Zechariah the fourth, the sons and relatives of Hosea were thirteen in all. To these divisions of the gatekeepers, to the chief men, were given duties like their relatives, to serve in the house of the Lord. They cast lots, the small and the great alike, according to their fathers' households, for every gate. The lot to the east fell to Shelemiah. Then they cast lots for his son Zechariah, a counselor with insight, and his lot came out to the north. For Obed-Edom it fell to the south, and to his sons went the storehouse. For Shepim and Hosea it was to the west, by the gate of Shalcheth, on the ascending highway. Guard corresponded to guard. On the east there were six Levites, on the north four daily, on the south four daily, and at the storehouse two by two. At the annex on the west there were four at the highway and two at the annex. These were the divisions of the gatekeepers of the sons of Korah and of the sons of Merari. The Levites, their relatives, were in charge of the treasures of the house of God and of the treasures of the dedicated gifts. The sons of Laden, the sons of the Jershonites belonging to Laden, namely, the Jehielites, were the heads of the Fathers' households, belonging to Laden the Gershonite. The sons of Jehili, Zetham, and his brother Joel, were in charge of the treasures of the house of the Lord. As for the Amramites, the Israelites, the Hebronites, and the Uzielites. Shabul the son of Gershom, the son of Moses, was officer over the treasures. His relatives by Eliezer were Rehabiah his son, Jeshea his son, Joram his son, Zikri his son, and Shelomoth his son. This Shelomoth and his relatives were in charge of all the treasures of the dedicated gifts which King David and the heads of the Fathers households, the commanders of thousands and hundreds, and the commanders of the army, 
had dedicated. They dedicated part of the spoils won in battles to repair the house of the Lord. And all that Samuel the seer had dedicated, and Saul the son of Kish, Abner the son of Neh, and Joab the son of Zeruiah, everyone who had dedicated anything, all of this was under the care of Shelomoth and his relatives. As for the Israelites, Shenaniah and his sons were assigned to outside duties for Israel, as officers and judges. As for the Hebronites, Hashabiah and his relatives, 1,700 capable men, were responsible for the affairs of Israel west of the Jordan, for all the work of the Lord and the service of the king. As for the Hebronites, Jerijah the chief, these Hebronites were sought out according to their genealogies and Fathers households, in the fortieth year of David's reign, and men of outstanding capability were found among them at Jazer of Gilead. And his relatives, capable men, numbered 2,700, heads of Fathers households. And King David appointed them as overseers of the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of the Manassites concerning all the affairs of God and of the king. Now this is the number of the sons of Israel, the heads of Fathers' households, the commanders of thousands and of hundreds, and their officers who served the king in all the affairs of the divisions which came in and went out month by month throughout the months of the year, each division numbering twenty-four thousand. Jashabim the son of Zabdiel was in charge of the first division for the first month, and in his division were twenty-four thousand. He was from the sons of Perez, and was chief of all the commanders of the army for the first month. Dodai the Ahohite and his division was in charge of the division for the second month, Mikloth being the chief officer, and in his division were twenty-four thousand. The third commander of the army for the third month was Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada the priest, as chief, and in his division were twenty-four thousand. This Benaiah was the mighty man of the thirty, and was in charge of thirty, and over his division was his son Amizabad. The fourth, for the fourth month was Asahel the brother of Joab, and Zebadiah his son after him, and in his division were twenty-four thousand. The fifth, for the fifth month was the commander Shamhath the Israelite, and in his division were twenty-four thousand. The sixth, for the sixth month was Ira the son of Ikesh the Tekoite, and in his division were twenty-four thousand. The seventh, for the seventh month was Helez the Pelonite of the sons of Ephraim, and in his division were twenty-four thousand. The eighth, for the eighth month was Sibachai the Hushathite of the Zerahites, and in his division were twenty-four thousand. The ninth, for the ninth month was Abizer the Anathathite of the Benjaminites, and in his division were twenty-four thousand. The tenth, for the tenth month was Maharai the Natophathite of the Zerahites, and in his division were twenty-four thousand. The eleventh, for the eleventh month was Benaiah the Pirathonite of the sons of Ephraim, and in his division were twenty-four thousand. The twelfth, for the twelfth month was Heldai the Netophathite of Othniel, and in his division were twenty-four thousand. Now in charge of the tribes of Israel, chief officer for the Reubenites was Eliezer the son of Zikri, for the Simonites, Shephatiah the son of Makkah. For Levi, Hashabiah the son of Kemuel, for Aaron, Zadok. For Judah, Elihu, one of David's brothers, for Issachar, Omri the son of Michael. For Zebulun, Ishmaiah the son of Obadiah, for Naphtali, Jeremoth the son of Azrael. For the sons of Ephraim, Hoshi the son of Azaziah, for the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joel the son of Padiah. For the half-tribe of Manasseh in Gilead, Iddo the son of Zechariah, for Benjamin, Jajel the son of Abner. For Dan, Azrael the son of Jeraham. These were the leaders of the tribes of Israel. But David did not count those twenty years of age and under, 
because the Lord had said he would multiply Israel as the stars of heaven. Joab the son of Zeruiah had begun to count them, but did not finish, and because of this, wrath came upon Israel, and the number was not included in the account of the chronicles of King David. Now Asmaveth the son of Adiel was responsible for the king's storehouses. And Jonathan the son of Uzziah was responsible for the storehouses in the country, the cities, the villages, and the towers. Ezri the son of Caleb was responsible for the agricultural workers who tilled the soil. Twenty-seven Shimi the Ramathite was responsible for the vineyards, and Zabdi the Shifmite was responsible for the produce of the vineyards stored in the wine cellars. Balhanan the Gedarite was responsible for the olive and sycamore trees in the Shafila, and Josh was responsible for the stores of oil. Shitri the Sharonite was responsible for the cattle which were grazing in Sharon, and Shaphat the son of Adlai was responsible for the cattle in the valleys. Obil the Ishmaelite was responsible for the camels, and Jediah the Maranathite was responsible for the donkeys. Jazais the Hagrite was responsible for the flocks. All these were overseers of the property which belonged to King David. Also Jonathan, David's uncle, was a counselor, a man of understanding, and a scribe, and Jehiel the son of Hakmoni tutored the king's sons. Ahithophel was counselor to the king, and Hushai the archite was the king's friend. Jehoiada the son of Benaiah, and Abiathar succeeded Ahithophel, and Joab was the commander of the king's army. Now David assembled at Jerusalem all the officials of Israel, the leaders of the tribes, and the commanders of the divisions that served the king, the commanders of thousands, and the commanders of hundreds, and the overseers of all the property and livestock belonging to the king and his sons, with the officials and the mighty men, all the valiant warriors. Then King David rose to his feet and said, Listen to me, my brothers and my people, I had intended to build a permanent home for the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God. So I had made preparations to build it. But God said to me, You shall not build a house for my name, because you are a man of war and have shed blood. Yet, the Lord, the God of Israel, chose me from all the household of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he has chosen Judah to be a leader, and in the house of Judah, my father's house, and among the sons of my father he took pleasure in me to make me king over all Israel. Of all my sons, for the Lord has given me many sons, he has chosen my son Solomon to sit on the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. He said to me, Your son Solomon is the one who shall build my house and my courtyards, for I have chosen him to be a son to me, and I will be a father to him. I will establish his kingdom forever if he resolutely performs my commandments and my ordinances, as is done now. So now, in the sight of all Israel, the assembly of the Lord, and in the presence of our God, keep and seek after all the commandments of the Lord your God so that you may possess the good land and leave it as an inheritance to your sons after you forever. As for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father, and serve him wholeheartedly and with a willing mind, for the Lord searches all hearts, and understands every intent of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will let you find him, but if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. Consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary, be courageous and act. Then David gave to his son Solomon the plan of the porch of the temple, its buildings, its storehouses, its upper rooms, its inner rooms, and the room for the atoning cover. And the plan of all that he had in mind, for the courtyards of the house of the Lord, and for all the surrounding rooms, for the storehouses of the house of God and for the storehouses of the dedicated things. 
also for the divisions of the priests and the Levites and for all the work of the service of the house of the Lord and for all the utensils of service in the house of the Lord. For the golden utensils, by weight of gold for all utensils for every service, for all the silver utensils, by weight of silver for all utensils for every service. And the weight of gold for the golden lampstands and their golden lamps, with the weight of each lampstand and its lamps, and the weight of silver for the silver lampstands, with the weight of each lampstand and its lamps according to the use of each lampstand. And the gold by weight for the tables of the showbread, for each table, and silver for the silver tables. And the forks, the basins, and the pitchers of pure gold, and for the golden bowls with the weight for each bowl, and for the silver bowls with the weight for each bowl. And for the altar of incense, refined gold by weight, and gold for the model of the chariot, and the cherubim that spread out their wings and covered the ark of the covenant of the Lord. All this, said David, the Lord made me understand in writing by his hand upon me, all the details of this pattern. Then David said to his son Solomon, Be strong and courageous, and act, do not fear nor be dismayed, for the Lord God, my God, is with you. He will not fail you nor forsake you until all the work for the service of the house of the Lord is finished. Now behold, there are the divisions of the priests and the Levites for all the service of the house of God, and every willing man of any skill will be with you in all the work for all kinds of service. The officials also and all the people will be entirely at your command. Then King David said to the entire assembly, My son Solomon, whom alone God has chosen, is still young and inexperienced, and the work is great, for the temple is not for mankind, but for the Lord God. Now with all my ability I have provided for the house of my God the gold for the things of gold, the silver for the things of silver, the bronze for the things of bronze, the iron for the things of iron, wood for the things of wood, onyx stones and inlaid stones, stones of antimony and stones of various colors, and all kinds of precious stones and alabaster in abundance. In addition, in my delight in the house of my God, the treasure I have of gold and silver, I give to the house of my God, over and above all that I have already provided for the holy temple. Namely, three thousand talents of gold, from the gold of Ophir, and seven thousand talents of refined silver, to overlay the walls of the buildings. Gold for the things of gold and silver for the things of silver, that is, for all the work done by the craftsmen. Who then is willing to consecrate himself this day to the Lord? Then the rulers of the Fathers' households, the leaders of the tribes of Israel, and the commanders of thousands and hundreds, with the supervisors of the king's work, offered willingly. And for the service of the house of God they gave five thousand talents and ten thousand derricks of gold, ten thousand talents of silver, eighteen thousand talents of brass, and a hundred thousand talents of iron. Whoever possessed precious stones gave them to the treasury of the house of the Lord, in care of Jehiel the Gershonite. Then the people rejoiced because they had offered so willingly, for they made their offering to the Lord wholeheartedly, and King David also rejoiced greatly. So David blessed the Lord in the sight of all the assembly, and David said, Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel our Father, forever and ever. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty, indeed everything that is in the heavens and on the earth, yours is the dominion, Lord, and you exalt yourself as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all, and in your hand is power and might, and it lies in your hand to make great and to strengthen everyone. Now therefore, our God, we thank you, and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to offer as generously as this? 
For all things come from you, and from your hand we have given to you. For we are strangers before you, and temporary residents, as all our fathers were, our days on the earth are like a shadow, and there is no hope. Lord our God, all this abundance that we have provided to build you a house for your holy name, it is from your hand, and everything is yours. Since I know, my God, that you put the heart to the test and delight in uprightness, I, in the integrity of my heart, have willingly offered all these things, so now with joy I have seen your people, who are present here, make their offerings willingly to you. Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, our fathers, keep this forever in the intentions of the hearts of your people, and direct their hearts to you. And give my son Solomon a perfect heart to keep your commandments, your testimonies, and your statutes, and to do them all, and to build the temple for which I have made provision. Then David said to all the assembly, Now bless the Lord your God. And all the assembly blessed the Lord, the God of their fathers, and bowed down and paid homage to the Lord and the King. On the next day they made sacrifices to the Lord and offered burnt offerings to the Lord, a thousand bulls, a thousand rams, and a thousand lambs, with their drink offerings and sacrifices in abundance for all Israel. So they ate and drank that day before the Lord with great gladness. And they made Solomon the son of David king a second time, and they anointed him as ruler for the Lord and Zadok as priest. Then Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king instead of his father David, and he prospered, and all Israel obeyed him. And all the officials, the mighty men, and also all the sons of King David pledged allegiance to King Solomon. The Lord highly honored Solomon in the sight of all Israel, and bestowed on him royal majesty which had not been bestowed on any king before him in Israel. Now David the son of Jesse reigned over all Israel. The period which he reigned over Israel was forty years, he reigned in Hebron seven years and in Jerusalem thirty-three years. Then he died at a good old age, full of days, riches, and honor, and his son Solomon reigned in his place. Now the acts of King David, from the first to the last, are written in the chronicles of Samuel the seer, in the chronicles of Nathan the prophet, and in the chronicles of Gad the seer. With all of his reign, his power, and the circumstances which came upon him, Israel, and all the kingdoms of the lands.